In at number 10, Aubrey O'Day. Aubrey O'Day is known for having raunchy photos on social media showing off her body, but it was recently exposed that her figure could be a lie. Some paparazzi photos went viral showing Aubrey allegedly out walking her dog, but she didn't look anything like her Instagram photos, and her body had an entirely different shape. Aubrey has clapped back at the photos, saying the paparazzi ones are doctored, even posting a photo of herself seemingly natural, holding up a piece of paper with the date written on it, looking almost exactly how she does on Instagram. But just days after that photo was taken, Aubrey was allegedly spotted at a pool, looking like the original paparazzi photos. There is speculation that the person in the paparazzi photos was not Aubrey, however the person did have tattoos in the same places as Aubrey, so people are pretty convinced that it's her. And at number 9, Steve Ranazizi. Steve is an actor and stand up comedian that became recognizable for his role in The League. However, his career took a major hit after it was exposed that he lied about being present at the 11 attacks. Steve would bring up 11 in interviews pretty often, saying it was the entire reason that he started his comedy career in the first place. In 2009, he said that he had been working for Merrill Lynch on the 54th floor of the South Tower when the first plane hit, even saying that he just barely made it out alive. But in 2015, he was exposed for being a liar. Apparently, there were no records showing that Steve had ever worked at the World Trade Center, and it was later revealed that he was in Midtown at the time of the attacks. He later admitted to everything, saying, quote, I was not at the Trade Center on that day. I don't know why I said this. This was inexcusable. I am truly, truly sorry. And at number 8, Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli was a massive pop duo in the 90s that had insane success, but one bad performance ruined their entire career for good. Basically, while the duo Fab Morvan and Rob Plattis were performing, their backtrack that they were lip syncing to skipped, proving they were not singing. After the performance, the whole scandal blew up. It was discovered that the men in the group never even sang one word of the songs. Millie Vanilli was created by German producer Frank Farian, and he took the voices of some unnamed singers and made the duo the faces of the group. So they were getting all the credit for basically doing nothing but the performing. This took a huge toll on Morvan and Pilatus, and especially on their mental health, even resulting in Pilatus taking his own life. And at number seven, Jesse Smollett. In January of 2019, former Empire star Jesse Smollett made headlines after reportedly getting attacked during a hate crime outside of his Chicago apartment. He alleged that the men that attacked him were white and called him racist and homophobic slurs. He also claimed that the men were wearing mega hats, which would make it clear that they support former President Trump, which put a stain on his reputation. However, things changed quickly with the story when it was revealed that Jesse did not actually get attacked as he claimed, but instead he paid two men to stage a fake attack on him. He was then charged for filing a fake police report, but those charges were dropped. After the fact, he was served multiple lawsuits, and Hollywood completely blacklisted him. In at number 6, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong was one of the greatest cyclists of all time, until it was revealed that he was cheating. Of course, any form of steroid use in the sports world is highly frowned upon and will get you kicked out of any competition. And over the course of his career, Lance denied using any form of performance enhancing drugs. However, in 2012, it was revealed that he lied and he had been doping his entire career. This was first exposed in 2010 when fellow cyclist Lloyd Landis, who was also accused of doping, revealed Armstrong kept his own blood available to use in transfusions during the race to give him an advantage. He also said Armstrong used testosterone to aid in recovery. After this, he was stripped of his seven Tour de France titles and he was blacklisted from sports. Halfway number five, Brian Williams. Brian Williams was one of the top news anchors ever, filling the coveted nightly news spot on NBC. He was even so well respected that he was frequently a guest on SNL and 30 Rock. But that all changed when it was exposed that Williams was a liar. The lie first started back in 2003 and he basically claimed that he was riding in a military helicopter that was forced to the ground while flying over Iraq. The plane was hit by an RPG and almost crashed. He kept repeating the story over and over for years after, even mentioning it on The Late Show with David Letterman in 2013. But when the world found out this whole story was a lie, everyone was shocked and felt they couldn't trust him again. He ended up getting a six month unpaid suspension from NBC and his career took a huge hit. He never came back to his role and was demoted to a smaller network. And at number four, Jack and Meg White. When the band called the White Stripes started to gain public attention in the 90s, they told the world that they were siblings. However, years later in 2005, the pair exposed that they are not siblings, but rather they were married. Apparently, they made up the story because they wanted the world to take them more seriously. I guess siblings are more respected than couples in the music world. The world found out the truth when the Detroit Free Press revealed that Jack, formerly Jack Giles, and Meg had gotten married on September 21st of 1996, and that he had taken her last 
name. The pair ended up divorcing in 2000, months before the release of their second album. Jack White told Rolling Stone that they did not come up with the plan to lie to the world, they just wanted to take the attention off their relationship and more so onto the music. In at number 3, Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson was exposed for not only faking her name, but her age. In Hollywood, having a stage name is very common and not something that people usually care about. However, after fans found out Rebel's name was Melanie Elizabeth Bounds and Rebel denied using a stage name, fans wanted to get to the bottom of it. Apparently, Rebel responded to the news of her name, saying that her real name is Rebel and Melanie and Elizabeth are her middle names that she would use to avoid getting teased. Not only did her name turn out to be a lie, but also her age. At the time, Rebel claimed that she was 29, but the tabloid revealed that she was actually 35, born on March 2nd of 1980, and had been lying the whole time. And truthfully, no one really cares about all these white lies, however the fact that she didn't own up to it was the strange part. And at number 2, James Fry. Being part of Oprah's book club selection is a huge deal, and it almost guarantees a huge rush of sales and attention. This is exactly what happened to James Fry in 2005. His memoir, called A Million Little Pieces, was added to Oprah's book club because of how raw the book was. The story focused on Fry's drug addiction and his long journey to recovery. However, things changed in 2006 when a website called The Smoking Gun exposed that Frey had lied about most of his memoir. The site revealed court records, police records, and interviews with a variety of sources showed that Frey had falsified and exaggerated parts of the book, specifically surrounding his criminal past and time in jail. This concluded with Frey being directly confronted by Oprah on the show, where he admitted to lying. And finally, at number one, Shania Twain. Shania Twain is the queen of country pop, growing up in Timmins, Ontario, Canada, a small rural suburb. While she was rising as a star, Shania claimed that she was part Native American on her father's side. This allowed her to work as an entertainer in the United States without a traditional visa because of a treaty that allows Native Americans to live wherever they want in North America. Shania claimed to be 50% Aboriginal on the side of her stepfather, Jerry Twain, a full-blooded Ojibwe. Her adoption by him, noted Windspeaker, allowed her to register as a quote status Indian, reporting that she was quote on the official band membership list of the Tegagami First Nation. However, it was revealed that even though Shania also claimed that her biological father had native blood, he did not, and his family stated that he was Irish and French. This made people question Shania and wonder why she put her stepfather as her biological dad. But she claims that her stepfather was her true father and she didn't lie to the native community. Coming number 10, Angelina Jolie. Born in Los Angeles, California, Angelina is the daughter of actors John Voight and Marshallin Bertrand. She is the niece of Chip Taylor and sister of James Haven. On her father's side, Jolie is of Czechoslovakian and German descent, and on her mother's side, she is French Canadian and is said to be part Iroquois. Angelina has proudly said that she is part native, but according to her father, it's not true. According to John, his wife's claims of being part Iroquois were simply said to enhance her exotic background. But after 1993, Bertrand turned her attention towards producing. She was the executive producer of a documentary called Trudell, which was about Native American activist John Trudell. It was shown at the Sundance Film Festival in 2005. But whatever her ancestry may be, Bertrand took an interest in indigenous causes and shared her activism with Angelina. Since then, Jolie has taken up causes such as refugee and immigrant children, although she is more than likely not Native American, so it's a bit of a fake life lie. Coming to number 9, Bill Clinton. 23 years ago, the US House of Representatives voted to impeach President Bill Clinton for giving false testimony about having an inappropriate relationship with White House intern Monica Lewinsky. The political scandal of 1998 saw the 42nd US President give false statements under oath, with a notorious one-liner leaving a big mark. The infamous words were broadcast during a press conference on January 26, 1998. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. In the summer, the president then admitted that he had been involved with Ms. Lewinsky, deeming the relationship not appropriate and a critical lapse in judgment. Mr. Clinton was later charged with two articles of impeachment, one for perjury for lying under oath to federal judges, and the other for obstruction of justice. Impeachment proceedings then began in early 1999, concluding with Mr. Clinton being acquitted of both charges. Ah, democracy, oh, 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 and he wrote on Jeffrey Epstein's plane 26 times. Just thought I'd mention that. Coming in number 8, Jennifer Lopez. There have been a lot of celebrities that have lied to the public about their age, but this one was a little bit weird. For the longest time, Jennifer Lopez had the public believing that she was born in 1970. Over 1999, a shooting took place inside of a nightclub where Puff Daddy, Jennifer Lopez, and Shine had all been partying. The incident led to a 10 year prison sentence for Diddy's then protege, and one of the victims that evening was Natanya Rubin, who was in the face. Diddy, who was acquitted of all charges related to the case, settled with three of the victims of the 1999 club. 
According to those reports, Ruben was paid $1.8 million and yes, she survived the shot. When the police arrived though, they had to identify everyone involved in the incident which led to Jennifer being caught in a lie about her age. In reality, she was born in 1969 but for whatever reason, she felt knocking off that extra year made her feel younger. Coming number 7, Amber Heard. Amber Heard willfully lied to US immigration by telling them that her British personal assistant was just a friend and was not working unlawfully. Her former aide, Kate James, who was fired by the actress in February of 2015, then alleged in a high court battle that Miss Heard deliberately smuggled her dogs into Australia, which led to her being caught breaching quarantine rules and overall thinking that she was above the law. The claims were made in a witness statement by Miss James, which was then submitted to the high court as part of Johnny Depp's libel action suit against the Sun newspaper. Coming number 6, Nick Young. This is another one of those messy celebrity breakups that had a lot of people shaking their heads at the time. At first it started as a prank when the LA Lakers were recording player D'Angelo Russell and it inadvertently included fellow player Nick Young. In the video, Nick apparently admits to cheating on his girlfriend rapper Iggy Azalea. Young then says it was false, Iggy says okay, and then the relationship went on. However, not too long after that, she caught him on the security camera bringing women into their home. To make things even worse, Young was still expecting a baby with his ex-girlfriend. A baby that was definitely conceived while he was cheating on his ex with Iggy. Following the security cam footage, Iggy tweeted, it out. I broke up with Nick because I found out he had brought other women into our home while I was away and caught them on the security footage. Then tweeting again saying, this is just like a second shot to the chest and I feel like I don't even know who the hell it is I've been loving all this time. Coming number 5, Bow Wow. Shad Moss aka Bow Wow has acted in some stellar movies from Like Mike to Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. The actor, rapper and producer currently has an estimated net worth of 1.5 million dollars and now he has said during interviews that this wasn't a lie and that he wanted to just post something related to travel but I don't know, you be the judge on this one. So this photo was actually from a private plane rental company website, just as one of their examples of what they offer, but moments after Bow Wow posted that photo to Instagram with the caption, traveling to NYC today, and then he was caught red handed. He was actually just flying to NYC like everybody else in coach, and a fan happened to recognize him and then immediately his lies went viral. Coming number 4, Rita Ora. Aside from being a talented musical act, Rita has also acted in some big films. She was in pretty much all of the Fifty Shades of Grey movies and even appeared in Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Here's where she got caught lying. Though. She posted this tweet that said, dropping my new song Monday if this gets 100,000 retweets. And it got way less than that. Which then resulted in the drastic narrative change of, by the way, my Twitter got hacked, somebody is threatening to release new music I've worked really hard on, nothing comes out until I'm ready. And funny enough, that tweet had more retweets than her previous one, but again, nothing even close to 100,000. She is dreaming if she thinks she can hit 100k. But by the way, she has 6.5 million followers, so... I'm thinking there's some bots in there. Coming number 3, P Diddy. Known primarily for his work in the music industry, Sean Combs has acted in a bunch of big name productions from Get Him to the Greek to Monster Ball with Halle Berry. His fans on Instagram found out that he was also a skilled photographer. In 2014, Diddy posted this beautiful photo of an eclipse captioned hashtag DiddyView. And right at the top comment though, you can see his fans calling BS on this one. BB Flower Girl commented, that's not Diddy's picture, it's at Cole underscore younger. It's digitally enhanced. And as you can see, the original post by Cole is filled with people tagging P. Diddy, but instead of giving the actual photographer any credit, he just posted it as his own. Coming number 2, Miley Cyrus. Back in 2018, Miley Cyrus was fighting to have a videotape of her deposition sealed by a judge. According to The Blast, Cyrus was caught up in a legal battle regarding her sister's dog, Feather. Cyrus's sister, Brandy, lives in an apartment complex that was paid for by her older sister. In 2014, Feather ended up biting one of her neighbors, and because Miley paid for the apartment, she was then forced to sit through a deposition where she answered questions pertaining to the dog. She she claimed that she didn't know the dog, which is a hilarious statement in a courtroom. However, after the neighbor did some digging, she found a video of Miley and Feather together from years back. She brought the evidence to court and used it to prove that Miley's testimony was a lie. Once Miley learned of the video's existence, she went to court to file an amended declaration claiming that she did know Feather after all. Now, Miley is asking that the judge seal the videotape of the deposition. Her argument is that she is one of the most famous celebrities in the world and is subject of media and tabloid speculation concerning even irrelevant minutia details of her life. That neighbor couldn't care less though and still wanted the video to be released to the public because she lied. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Kanye West. Kanye West was doing his Kanye best when he was trying to get himself into the election for November 3rd. The odds seemed very stacked against him though, but time after time it looked as though he was finally finding ways to prevail and end up on the ballot in most states under the party known as the Birthday Party. Which is a hilarious name. That being said, his petition to appear on New Jersey's ballot as a presidential candidate contained more than 600 defective signatures. Many of those signatures had very similar writing, and according to a formal complaint filed with the state on Wednesday, election law attorney Scott Salmon arrested 
registered Democrat filed the objection with the State Division of Elections after reviewing more than 1,300 signatures that the rapper had submitted. West managed to exceed the requirement of 800 signatures to appear on the ballot as an independent candidate in just in time for the deadline, but now his whole campaign was up in the air due to him being caught in this lie. Coming to number 10, James Franco. When we think of James Franco, we usually think of the characters in film and TV that he's best known for. And the dangerous thing with James is that when he interacts with fans, he realizes just how famous he is and therefore believes that he can get away with a lot of terrible stuff. For example, the time that he decided to slide into the DMs of a fan that was underage. A girl from a small Scottish town was on a trip to New York City when she ended up getting to meet Franco at the Broadway show called Of Mice and Men. After tagging him in an Instagram video that is no longer available, James began flirting with her through the app. Lucy didn't believe that it was actually James Franco, so she inquired about proving his identity, which he did with no issue. He was very aggressive with trying to get this fan into his bed, which really changes the way that you see him. I mean, asking if he should get a hotel room right after asking if she was single is just nuts. Then to see her tell him that she would come back to NYC when she turned 18 only made him persist, which was really gross and proved that he had crossed a, a number of lines. In at number 9, Gwyneth Paltrow. Back when Trump was president, he told 3M to stop distributing their masks to Canada and Latin America so that Americans could have them. The reason why they said for the average person not to buy masks at the time was due to there already being a shortage and most of them were needed for healthcare workers. Hence the government just telling you to stay home instead, but try telling that to the owner of Goop. Paltrow posted this selfie saying, en route to Paris, paranoid, prudent, panicked, placid, pandemic, propaganda. Paltrow's just going to go ahead and sleep with this thing on the plane. I've already been in this movie, stay safe, don't shake hands, wash hands frequently. And here's where it all began to backfire. Paltrow threw on the mask and protective gear for another Instagram post about going to a local farmer's market. To which Dr. Jen Gunter replied, Why do you need gloves and a mask? Isn't your immune boosting supplement that you were promoting at the start of the flu season effective? I mean, kind of caught lying there. It ended up right, K pop. Back when everyone was in lockdown for the first time, we all braced ourselves as April Fool's Day approached. No one wanted to be pranked because it felt as if we were already in the middle of some sick joke. The last person we would ever have imagined trying to pull off a prank though was a K-pop star, that's for sure. South Korean singer and actor Kim jae Young decided it would be hilarious to tell his followers that he had been infected by the virus as a result of his negligence. He goes on to say that a person's individual actions can have such a big impact on a society as a whole. Not wrong, but okay. Then he decided to apologize to all of those who have been infected by him, closing out with, My fool's judgment to live as though it couldn't happen to me is why I am like this today. The quote unquote prank didn't stop there though as he continued in another post saying that he was currently hospitalized and to make matters worse he even said that it wasn't an April Fool's joke, adding that his family and friends are getting sick and dying even. So he says all of that and then at the end of the day, literally at the end of April Fool's, he just goes, it was all a joke, April Fool's, ha, I made you all think I had some terrible disease that was spreading around the world, how funny. Not too long after that though, the entire fan base took over social media to have a hashtag Jae is over party, and rightfully so. Coming in number seven, Ellen DeGeneres. When the pandemic happened and everyone went into lockdown, Ellen had a choice. She could have saved her staff and allowed them to work from home, but instead she bailed on them and hired an independent company instead. This clearly did not sit well with her former staffers and thus unleashed a litany of complaints about the star. Not only that, but we had a full Twitter thread of just negative interactions in general with Ellen that led many of us to believe that she was nowhere near the queen of nice like she wanted us to think. For example, the poor waitress who nearly lost her job after Ellen complained to management that her nail polish was chipped during service. On top of that, her comments about her 27 million dollar home feeling like jail wasn't viewed as comical but rather a flaunting of privilege in these uncertain times. Something that's both unnecessary and made people realize how truly out of touch these celebrities are. The truth about Ellen though is that she has been involved in the world of branding and celebrity imagery for so long that now her new hot takes are suddenly nowhere near relatable to the general public. Coming number 6, Robin Thicke. This one is next level embarrassing for everyone involved. His summer smash hit called Blurred Lines certainly started to explain his real life. Robin was happily married to wife Paula Patton, for whom he shares a son with. However, in 2013, he threw his entire marriage under the bus as a photo emerged of the singer getting a little too personal with a female fan who was later identified as a socialite. In the photo taken, you can see that the mirror behind Lana and Robin catches him with his hand going right up her dress. And the photo appeared to have been taken at an MTV VMA after party in New York City, which also just so happened to be the night that Robin had done his controversial performance with Miley Cyrus. So you know when he got home he had a lot of apologizing and a lot of explaining to do. Coming to number 5, Lindsay Lohan. 
Whenever I think about Lindsay Lohan, my first thought always goes to her just being an actor. However, in 2018, she was trying to act like some sort of savior and really got exposed. While Lindsay Lohan was in Moscow, she posted a live video to Instagram where she told her fans that she spotted two young boys that she believed were human trafficking victims. In the video, Lohan approaches this family of what she says are Syrian refugees sitting on a sidewalk under some blankets. Now, the fact that she wants to help this family is nice, but what's not nice is the fact that she also had to live stream this on her Instagram. Lohan tries to offer them a hotel room and suggests that the boys could even come back with her to watch movies on her TV or computer. And when the mother refuses to let her children just leave with Lindsay Lohan, the actress says to the mother, You should not have them on the floor. You should be a hardworking woman and you should be doing what you can for your children so they have a better life. The family then tries to walk away from this odd confrontation, but Lohan continues to follow them and even starts accusing the mother of trafficking her own children. Which leads us to this really embarrassing moment for Lindsay Lohan. After Lindsay tries to just run off with one of these children, the mother spins around and just cracks Lohan in the face, knocking her to the ground. Coming to number four, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey can definitely sing. There's no question about that. However, this does not make her immune from copping out the odd time and lip syncing from time to time. Right off the top, you can tell that she is lip syncing in this performance, but when the music transitions and she comes down to the main stage, the sound tech plays the wrong song. I don't know if this was just an error or if someone was really trying to expose Mariah like that, but damn. My favorite part comes later on after she tells the crowd that she picked the wrong song. As she's talking, like mid sentence, you can hear her trademark whistle. Little note. I'm gonna say let the audience sing, okay? I mean, I had to include her in this list because apparently she got paid $3.5 million to lip sync her New Year's Eve performance. I guess you could say more than one ball was dropped that night. Speaking of lip syncing, coming in number three, Ashley Simpson. This video still gives me secondhand embarrassment. Truly, truly does. And I, I just can't stop talking about it because it, it's amazing. In this video, you can see all of this confusion when Ashley realizes that the track started playing before she even had the microphone up to her face. So then she just awkwardly dances instead. And at that point, you can't even really salvage the performance. I mean, it's called Saturday Night Live for a reason. So she just did a little dance, said that she was sorry, and then blamed her band for playing the wrong song. And then it was all quick cut to commercial from there. During an interview several years later, she was asked about this and here's what Ashley had to say. Um, what happened there was I had a vocal problem. I had two nodes beating against each other and I woke up and I had no voice and, and then I should have said no I will not go on. I will not do this. Coming number two, Selena Gomez. This is perhaps every musician's worst nightmare and it happened to Selena Gomez. At the 2013 Jingle Ball in Los Angeles, Selena had some pretty serious sound issues happening while she was performing. The irony in this situation though was when she was singing the line I got no regrets and then boom her lip syncing was exposed. Immediately after, while she's pausing with the mic lowered from her face, the vocal track sings on and shocks the 20,000 fans in attendance. And if that wasn't bad enough, she went on to alienate her fans even more by dropping a very audible F-bomb. The big WTF came after she ripped out her earpiece and then tried to continue, but when she couldn't get back into the song, her mic picked up the last moment of anger. Last but certainly least in our number one spot, Michael Richards. Michael Richards is known for his role as Kramer on Seinfeld, and he's really funny on that show because he literally had Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David writing for him. I mean, two of the greatest comedic writers in, in our time, really. Although when that show ended, Kramer thought that he could just transition into stand-up comedy and be just as funny. Unfortunately, when his set was not going well at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, he completely lost his mind and just buried his career. <laughs> I guess someone heckled him and then he went on a tirade by screaming racial slurs and attacking the audience. It was so bad that a large majority of the crowd just got up and left the club in the middle of his act. He was never able to redeem himself after this racist rant and it will serve as a stark reminder that Kramer was never funny. <laughs> Fight me in the comments. Every time I see this backdrop I think about Kramer f***ing up. <laughs>